1 John 5.4 I'm going to demonstrate it 1 John 5.4 For whatsoever is born of God overcome the world and this is the victory that has overcome even our faith oh the question is is it automatic do we have a child maybe two three years four years five years do we have a child there two years one year two, three years just six months any child there fast get me the child let the mother let the mother carry the child and come fast you have to be fast now Now listen. This is your son, your first son. Is your husband in church? Come. Where is the husband? Come, sir. You need to understand this. Welcome, sir. How are you doing, sir? Welcome, sir. Now, this is your first child. Your, your, your third. But your, your first son, good. So whether first, second, or third. Now, watch this. What's, what's your name, sir? Abraham. Abraham. Ugo Obu. Abraham Ugo Obu. Did you hear that? What's his name? J. No, the boy. Hans David. Ugo Obu. Did you notice something? Ugo Obu. Ugo Obu. Why? Why not Anike? Follow me. If you understand it, your life will change. So immediately he got married to this lady gave birth to this child this child automatically took his name right automatically also all that this man has has been wheeled to this child right at least a fraction of his children this child receives a level of inheritance from him by just being born here but I want to ask you if this child remains like this, will this child ever step into this inheritance? Why? Because he's a child. So when the Bible says that he that is born of God overcomes, it is not automatic. That person born of God to walk into the reality of that overcoming nature must have grown. Aye. So it is not automatic. Even though he says all things are yours, read the following verse. He says it is released unto the sons. So it is those who have grown that can participate in it. So giving your life to Jesus today does not automatically make all the witches leave you. You must now grow. Did you hear what I said? You must now grow. You must now begin to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling until growth has happened you can't step into what is yours now look at this how did Jesus bring us to the realm of restoration did he actually give us what we have lost yes but in the spiritual places can I have your phone sir can I have your phone Thank you, sir. Your phone. These are your phones. Can I have your phone? <laughs> come, Senator, come. Leave your phone. You are the thief. So this man is a thief. He stole from these four persons. And then as he's about to run, my brother, come and hold him. You know how you hold a thief? <laughs> hold him very well. <laughs> and then, as a police officer, tell him to keep the phone here. 
for them. Then who are the ones that have these phones? Come and identify your phone. Stay behind. Three of you come and identify your phone. Identify and collect. Now, if you are asked to identify your own and you say it's a Nokia touch, stand. What type of your phone is your own? No, leave iPhone. I, what type of phone? What I mean, Nokia touch. Not, I know you want to mention this one now, but I, I'm saying it's Nokia touch. Say Nokia touch. Nokia touch. If you are the one giving it to, will you release it? Why? Why? Do you see what these guys did? When they came, they started looking. They know what their phones are. Now you will see that these ones who can identify theirs, collected theirs, but this one who cannot, if in the era of this Nigerian police force, if they ask you what is your phone, and you say Nokia 3, Nokia 3310, or Nokia Touch, does she still, does the phone still belong to her? <laughs> Does it now belong to the police? But is the phone has? What is the challenge? Identity crisis. Identity crisis. So what makes a man to step into his inheritance is when he knows who he is. They know not. They know not. I am. They know not. They know not. Therefore, they die like mere men. The foundation of the earth is out of course. But I have told you, you are God. And all of you are the sons of the living God. Identity crisis. Who do men say I am? Jesus asked. And after that, he said, who do you say I am? He's trying to tell you that the real you is not the people. People explained to be you. The real you is who you know you are. Until you have the real identity, you cannot walk in the liberty of this dominion. You can walk in the liberty of this dominion. So why has these three great people picked their phones, recovered it from the thief? <laughs> why was he recovered from the three of them? Or this phone recovered by three of them and this one couldn't get hers back. Why? She could not identify it. But then all of a sudden, uh, what phone was taken from you? Nokia what? Nokia 310. Nokia 310. And then the police officer said, you say what? How can it be Nokia? And then you remember. I, iPhone 11 Pro Max. iPhone 11 Pro Max. Immediately she remembered what happens. She will go and take what's hers. So restoration was released to us by God. But not every believer has walked into it. You receive your own the day you identify it. So there are a lot of people who have received theirs. Every blessing God releases is in the heavenly places. That's why the Bible says he has blessed us with all blessings in the heavenly places. God has done his job. The conversion to the earth realm is now incumbent on you. So if you are not receiving yours, it is because you have not learned how to convert it. That's why discovery is the first prerequisite requirement for recovery. You can't recover what you don't know you have lost. Suddenly, she's able to identify her phone. iPhone 11 Pro Max, come. And then it's given to her. Was it delayed? Was it delayed? Yes. Did she receive it when they received the answer? Was he delayed? Who delayed? Is he God or her? So why is your miracle delaying? Knowledge problem. The day you know you will walk into it. The day you know you will walk into it. The day you know you will step into it. The day you know. The day you know. The day you know. The day you know. You may not know that a believer can live for 50 years and not lay on the hospital bed it's possible 
It's possible to live a crisis-free life. Oh, somebody is saying, uh, but everybody on earth will suffer crisis. I want to ask you, Jesus was in that ship that would have crashed. That faced all manner of Euroclidus turbulent wind. The storm arose. And it was almost getting sinked. What did he do? He was sleeping when the stormy waters was raging. So it does not mean the stormy waters will not arise, but you will stay afloat. God never instructed Noah to take the fish into the ark. He gave him instruction for every other animal. He said, take the bed. Take every other animal for the fish. He wasn't instructed. As a matter of fact, the fish didn't enter the ark. So what was killing others is actually what the fish required to stay alive. It's called the covenant of exemption. Several years ago, I sat before a doctor who told me you can never father a child. I had a disease, toilet infection, that stayed in my body for several years. It was in my body for over 15 years, untreated. Until it began to send out pores all over my faces. Some of the marks still in my body. I would wake up with yellow stuffs where I laid down. My body literally decayed. And after I was diagnosed, they found two things. One was a fungi infection. The other one was a toilet infection, bacteria infection. And I was told I can never father a child. No sperm count. When I proposed to her, I told her I will never be able to give you a child. She said we will adopt. I accepted my fate that way. And up until then, I didn't know what was called erection. I would wake up and, you know, it was, I didn't know what was called erection. Until one day I was studying the scriptures and I read and saw, none shall be buried. Hi. None shall be buried. In the midst of my children, I said, is this place in the scriptures? I read it again. None shall be buried. None shall be buried. In the midst of my children, none shall be buried. None shall be buried. In the midst of my children. Oh, Gavalia died. I said, am I one of his children? The answer is yes. I screamed, I got it. And then I picked up my number, I called him. I called her. I said, how many children would you want me to give you? And then she mentioned a particular number. I said, I am okay now, I am healed. She said, wow, what happened? And she took a bike. She landed, she was expecting to hear that a doctor gave me 15 injections and I said, I saw in God's word, I could see the disappointment in her face, but that was the end, no treatment. Now, listen, you would have met a pastor who is barren now, if I continued accepting that faith. But immediately I rejected that report. Isaiah 53 verse number 1 Whose report have you believed? For the arm of the Lord Every report has an arm You are under the rulership of the report you have believed Because you are what you believe You are under the dominion of your belief system And today we are four children still counting Now listen to the voice of the Lord Restoration cannot happen until you discover after you have known God. Those who do know their God, Daniel eleven thirty two, 32, shall be strong and they shall do exploit. You must now know who you are. Let me tell you the difference between Abraham and Lazarus. Lazarus thought all through his life everything there is concerning his destiny was to be laid down at the gate of a rich man to beg. The Bible says he desired to eat the crumbs that fell 
from the rich man's table. The dogs would often leave the sores of Lazarus. He was there. He was a believer. He was not less of a born again than Abraham. But Abraham chose a different path. He knew that God who could recreate a human spirit can also make one rich. So they came to God from different belief systems. God never disturbed Lazarus. He never. He left Lazarus to his desire. There was a, a man called Lazarus who was laid at the gate of the rich man. Desiring. It was not God who put him there. It was his desire. Desiring to eat of the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Watch their two mentalities. Lazarus would wake up one day and would be looking. Are they bringing the stuff? He was, he had been in, at that gate for a very long time to the point that even the dogs recognized him. The dogs were now friendly to him. To ease his pain, the dogs had to eat to lick the sores. He was there. But one day Abraham went to war and the king called him and said, take a portion of the spoils of war. He looked at the king and said, I know the journey I'm taking. One day I'm going to be the father of the earth. Let it not be said that you made Abraham of God rich. Did you see that mentality? The mentality is sufficiency mentality. Abundance mentality. So who are you? Have you discovered who you are? Do you know who you are? We know Peter. We know Paul. We know Jesus. Who are you? Until you discover who you are, you cannot recover what is yours. Identity. Paul was writing, he said, an ear. H-E-I-A, what we call her. An ear. Different not from a servant. That is this child you are seeing now, even though this child will be the inheritor of everything that belongs to my brother. But because he's still a child, he's not different from the servant of the house. In fact, the servant of that house has more authority than him because he has not grown until growth takes place. And then everything that is his will now be handed over to him. So most times we are praying for God to do certain things. They have not been handed over to us because we have not grown into it. Until you grow into it, you cannot receive it. Even when we, we are using just voice to speak in new school, when there was no equipment, I was still screaming, those are the overflow. The hall was 400 and something capacity. 30 persons in 400 and something capacity. I was screaming, those are the overflow. I knew that there are, in my spirit, I see an overflow. How do you see yourself? Who are you? Some really summarize who you are. Now, I want to say this. In defining who you are, your failure does not define you. There are five things that don't define you. Number one, your failure is not who you are. Number two, people, the, what people say you are is not who you are. Number three, the devil cannot define who you are. Number four, your parent cannot truly define who you are. Number five, you cannot truly define who you are. Then who am I? I am who God has made me. So anytime you want to know who you are, don't look at your failure. Don't look at your antecedents. Look at what God said. You are a royal priesthood. A chosen generation. A called out people. Called out to show forth the excellency of his glory. Yes, I have done three abortions. A royal priesthood. Not qualified enough. A royal priesthood. That thing I did did not touch my royalty. The only thing is that it postponed it. <laughs> yeah. 
you bought a Christmas cloth for your child and then you are about to go out and the child came out, came back dirty and then as the child ran back dirty I, we are about to go for Christmas why are you like this what do you do, do you wear the clothes on the child immediately what do you tell the child camp it does it mean the clothes does no longer belong to the child camp it, can't wash as soon as the child washes and comes what is the child will be released to the child so maybe you have done one or two things it does not mean your inheritance has been taken away from you it has been kept for the day your growth will happen that's why prodigal son said i will arise and go to my father and i will tell him i've sinned against the heaven and the earth i'm not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your hired servants before he could be able to say that the father shut him down and the father said let the celebration begin the father put on him a new raiment and then killed the fattest of the car took his ring and put on his hand how do you explain it i was expecting that the privileges of that kingdom would be denied him to teach him a lesson sirs god does not teach lessons as soon as we come to him the bible says now we are new creatures now we are new creatures once you come back to him he gives you all that you have lost all you need to do is to take that step like the prodigal son did and return to him if anyone is in christ not if anyone is in church if anyone is in christ not if anyone is in department church department is good but in christ he is a new creation amplified said never seen before it's like seeing a dog with horns a rare breed if anyone is in christ never seen before if anyone is in christ never seen before he is a new creation all things are passed away all things are passed away how many abortions again 15 they are passed away oh you used to be a criminal they are passed away so the murderer is now Paul the apostle they are passed away Abraham the adulterer is now the father of all nations they are passed away all things are passed away and all things how many things all things all things all things have become new all things not few things all things have become new so there is a complete overhauling and a regeneration and at this time, what is yours is released to you.